Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second World's Prediction show sponsored by Prize Picks. This is the show where myself and three, I, I talk to three friends. I'm not doing as much as, as they are. I put them in the hot seat and ask them to make predictions about worlds, both about uh, individual teams and how those matchups are going to go, but also about individual players and make some, uh, we make some predictions, some projections on what their stats, stat lines are going to look like over on prize picks uh we did an hour and 20 minutes yesterday for a show that's supposed to be 30 minutes so i'm going to rush through introductions uh myself my my name is travis gafford you might be familiar with me if you're watching my content i'm not going to waste time on that but uh cubby here my co-host from hotline league cubby how are you doing uh good i have more hopium now yeah well yeah that makes one of us uh, next up we have Elias, Elias, a former writer on the LCS and on players and avid prize picker. Elias, how are you feeling today? Really good. Uh, I'm excited to get into how last night went. Um, I also just like, it was just fun believing, even for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Spo- spoilers, by the way, for people who've not watched. Oh, uh, yeah. You're going you're gonna to get spoiled on this show for sure. And then finally, we have Croissant, noted GM and coach currently in between roles, but climbing the ladder hard in Mythic on Duskmorn Draft. Croissant, how are you doing this afternoon? Are you awake? Good. I'm, I'm wide awake, and, you know, I'm actually climbing the ladder on ARAM right now because oh, okay. uh, of how much hope and infectious energy the games gave me. Really? Almost. And that just so, inspired you to go play ARAM? Yeah, got to gotta get some get some ELO there, you know? Good. Well, let's talk about what happened last night. We had, we're going to first recap what happened last night. We'll talk about everybody's lineups and how they did. And then we're going to preview the matches for tomorrow. So first off, last night we had Top Esports and DK go head to head. Top Esports 2-0. Raise your hand if you were part of the crew yesterday that predicted Top to win. Okay, so we got Covey at Elias and not raising his hand is Croissant. What did you guys think of those games? Croissant, were you disappointed that DK did not pull it out? Yeah. Uh, I mean, honestly, I am a really big Dracula fan. Like, one of his favorite, favorite, one of my favorite quotes of his is saying that I hope to meet more normal humans in the future. <laughs> um, and it's just like, uh, yeah, they clutched it and they brought out some new picks like Xin Zhao, um, which I think that was the tournament first, but could be wrong there. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was good stuff. Overall, they, they came out much more cohesive, and uh, Cream was not on Lucian, and they toasted them. Yeah. Good. I'm really glad this thing got played. That is a chance we didn't highlight for champs that are playable, but definitely one that has actually, like, should have been meta. Or not meta, but, like, has, should have made an appearance by this point. Yeah. 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 Uh, Elias, what did you think of that match? Uh, I liked a lot. It did not go, uh, for those of you that watched yesterday's episode, it did not go how I expected... Um, as far as draft is concerned, uh, but I uh, I was really happy. Um, it's kind of hard not to love a lot of the players on top of esports. I really do want this to be the like Chinese team that breaks out. Um, and uh, just like Croissant said, like Jackie Love popping off just like puts a stupid smile on my face. Yeah. No, it's cool to see how well they did, and I I also really like the DK players, so I'm sad that it couldn't at least be like a a two one or whatever, but I'm, I'm hopeful for DK as they move forward in the tournament and we'll see what top can do as they've made it into quarters. All right. So next up we have, I guess the one we'll probably spend a little bit more time talking about, which is HLE versus FlyQuest and HLE won two one FlyQuest got a win there. Raise your hand. If you predicted HLE to win unanimous, winners on the uh, prediction there for this this lineup or for this match in particular so i think you guys did say that it would be a 2-0 though i think all three of you did right yeah yes so even if you got the prediction right you did get the way it would go wrong uh why why did it it go 2-1 was it just the new new or what happened in that second game that allowed flight quest to pull it out uh well it was so it felt like it was two really good game plans. Like, yes, the the game one didn't uh, shake out their way. 
Um, but as the game progressed, I became more and more sold on the game one draft. Um, uh, and then obviously, like, there was, it, it felt like they were losing, losing, losing. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh my God, this is a real game. Um, the game three, uh, I, uh, we can go in, I guess we can go into that one a little bit later. But uh, my takeaway was like, it felt like they came into with the entire series with very clear game plans on how they wanted all three drafts to go. And I think from that perspective, the FlyQuest staff can't get enough compliments. Um, because we saw in game two, when they were able to like fire on all cylinders, um, they take a win off of the LCK champions. Yeah. No, I thought, I thought that was very fair. I, I appreciate the fact that we had sort of the, narrative precursor in the nuke duck uh line where he said like oh we've we haven't been scraping them because we've got some secret tech and then we see new new pop out and i think ls was like oh yeah this olaf is not going to be able to do anything without an enchanter that all the replies were like what are you talking about Nudu is the enchanter so it was it was fun to see how game two went even if it was heartbreaking to see how utterly demolished they got in game three which i feel like is you know i tweeted like the lcs special or whatever because i I do feel like there's been many times where, you know, against all odds, North America ends up pulling out of an awesome like game two and it just immediately gets demolished in game three. And I've I've witnessed that so many times and of course that's what happened this time. So I don't know. Uh Croissant, you I know spend a lot of time thinking about draft and all that stuff. What did you think of the series? Um, well, first I would like to you know I, th- I understand why it can be demoralizing to be like, oh, they were competitive um, in game one, a little bit of a throw. They they took game two as cleanly as they could with the Nunu, and then game three is just like pretty crushing. But it is worth noting that it's like, it's not like the common North American experience, right? It's like, mm-hmm. that's the high end of the North American experience. Uh, it's right, it's like, um, and I think FlyQuest deserves a lot of props taking down um, HLE in the way that they did and coming in with the prep. And as, as I talked about, like, the, the nuke duck quote, but also the aim for the stars and land on the moon kind of situation, because I think they set themselves up really well for, like, uh, like that's the kind of momentum that you need going into the final knockout um, or the final qualification match for them. Um, and so one thing I would say is... I don't know why I didn't bring up Nunu. Probably not to like, uh, yeah, I didn't want to give away any secrets, right? Like uh, Tabe style, because it it is not. I I would be very surprised if Inspired hadn't played Nunu versus like most of the teams in LCS. Mm. Like uh, in yep. scrims, he is honestly one of like it's it's scarred in my memory as like one of the most damaging things that a team can play against in scrims um and just imagine dealing with that mid-series is difficult uh and so um but the thing is like people are talking about like amumu and these other champions and cheese picks and it's just like when i looked at every single champion on both sides actually for game one i was like these are kind of the champions that these players are known for, for the most part, right? Like Sejuani, yeah. Yon on left side, Kaisa, Rel also for their bot lane for HLE. And then on right side, like literally Cassio, Callista, Renata, like probably the most archetypical or yeah, just what I identify each player with. Urgot, not as much with Bippo, but really like it's in his top five most played or whatever. Um, and it's on, it's like his lowest win rate of those, but like uh, he's always been comfortable on it and then uh the amumu was like it was like 30 percent presence by in in playoffs for na so it's like amumu was really like blabber was playing it inspired was playing it so i think they took kind of our like you know they took the na style and they really repped it uh on on the world stage and against like um such a qualified opponent so i think uh the biggest things i would just point out is like, I think that FlyQuest wasn't trying to cheese. I think they they chose things that were obviously destabilizing and um, like they had there was an information disadvantage for HLE. But on top of that, I think that they played genuinely to the strengths of their players 
And it's really interesting because a lot of people were like, wow, we did great on Amumu. We did great on Nunu. Let's pick Vi and run it down like game three. Vi has always been a very special champion for Inspire because when he first pulled it out uh, on EG against Cloud9 in like 2022 20, playoffs, um, it was like, I think it was to qualify for Worlds or something. Uh, and I don't remember, did, did C9 not make Worlds that year, right? Because it was EG, TL, or maybe, maybe, no, they did, they did. But mm -hmm. um, he popped off. He went like 10 they, and they 1 on Vi. TL. And at yeah. the time, Vi was seen similarly to like how champions like Nunu and Vi are now, right? Like, obviously, we had Broxa play on CLG with like the Vi Galio, but it, it was still like a niche pick that didn't come out that often. And since then, he's often very much struggled because Vi obviously it doesn't really fit his style of like inspired a lot of people think of him as a farming jungler but he really likes to command the game in the first few rounds and Vi is like much more about the mid game picks and not and like obviously mm. your first level six timer and stuff like that but like it is the on the spectrum of his skill set of like staying efficient versus impacting the game Vi can do that but she also is like how you you actually need a pressure on windows on a much more like on like a 90 second cycle more so than like a like every two minutes or three minutes like with a mumu and i think what was really sad to see for me about game one was that like there were a lot of unforced errors and people saw it as a throw i think to be fair hle made more unforced errors than like you know um then FlyQuest did, but that's to be expected because it's like, you see an Urgot, he's seeping into the pit, you go and try and fight him, and then you... Oh, he's actually not dying as fast as you thought, he flipped your carry, and then a Mumu Q R flashed. Like, and he covered like, you know, 2,000 units of distance to CC. Um, so, but what was really funny for me was like, even FlyQuest seemed like... There, there's It's a double-edged sword when you play these picks, right? Because... Urgot getting picked was Urgot getting punished early on, uh, and like making a lot of fundamental errors was what really dropped FlyQuest so far behind in the game. Like uh, Urgot getting picked at the very end was how the game just like ended so fast, even though like mm -hmm. FlyQuest was in a winning position. Um, and those are like the vulnerabilities of the champion that like champions like Nar or Jax or Cassante like they're, they're not as easily like like. Uh, kind of hunted in that way, and Amumu was also like inspired. Kept on getting these amazing like multi-man R flashes, and then he would die like in sixty to ninety seconds right afterwards, right? And so, um, it's hard because it's like you, the, how many reps do you, we think they actually have on these champions? Still not like, I would be really surprised if both of those players had played more than like five to ten scrims on each of those. You don't get that many reps on these champions, especially when you're trying to hide them. Because even if they didn't play LCK, LPL players, it's like you have a scrim block with three to six games against, uh, you know, G2 or T1 or TL. And, like, even if you have a great Nunu game, the team's going to ban it against you the next game, right? And they get, uh, if they don't expect to play against Nunu from any other team. Uh, and so, yeah. Anyway, really, really respect what Fly brought to the table. I think uh, I would be... Like, obviously, they could get a very difficult draw. DK could also get a hilariously bad draw where they, like, play against three Chinese teams in a row, but they also played against two early, easy teams early on. So um, I think, hopefully, this is a sign of more upsets to come and in, in the G2-T1 series, et cetera, et cetera. But, yeah, those were just some thoughts about, like, the draft and whatever. I appreciate it. Very thorough. Uh, as <laughs> as as I've noticed, noted, you tend to be, Croissant. But no, yes, I, yes, I appreciate yes. the insight into the draft stuff because I think there are few people uh, around like yourself who have sort of the understanding of how FlyQuest is drafted behind the scenes at the LCS uh, and scrims and perhaps what you have seen from them before that other fans in the public haven't had a chance to see yet. So, But I do want to get a chance to go into how everyone did on their lineups. So let's go person by person and we'll recap what their lineup was and how they did. So Cubby, let's go ahead and tell me what was your lineup? I had Boham more than a half a kill and two maps. Showmaker more than six and a half kills and two maps. And then Viper less than 12 kills 
in two maps. And which and ones that lost? Which ones <laughs> it lost? But it did here, lose. So it here's lost. your your da- you for this episode. You can hold this red thumbs down icon that I've <laughs> oh, gifted you. you. That'll you be Travis. sitting next to you for this episode. But oh, that's fantastic. Uh, okay, so which ones landed? Which ones didn't? Uh, Moham got a kill in game one. Showmaker was one kill short, and then Viper was at 12 kills over the two games. So I Showmaker gets one more kill. Viper gets one last kill. I win. But sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles. So yeah. good. Uh, you know what? It, it was nice. Well played by prize picks. That's what I'm going to throw it at. It was sure. very accurate, the, the squares they had at the, before the games. You know. All right. Next up, Elias, what were your predictions? And maybe as you go through each one, you can tell me if it landed or not. Uh, I, uh, went cream, uh, the, the play was eight kills and I went more, uh, and inspired, uh, the, uh, play was three kills and I went more, uh, the cream line hit at, I believe 11. Um, those two Aurora games were like for real. Um, also DK, like there was a lot of moments where I'm like, I feel like DK's giving me this because they would like play a flight for, for a little too long with Aurora that was full health. And I was like, yeah, give them two more kills. That makes me happy. Um, and then the inspired uh, play hit exactly, uh, which means the, the uh, it technically clears. Uh, yeah, the payout which is, the is best kind of when you get uh, a lowered payout because yeah, you barely, sure. you barely snuck through, but mm-hmm. you today are a winner. So here's your little trophy. Yay, you can enjoy that great. for this episode. Trophy. And then finally, oh, we have Croissant. Croissant, what was your projection? What was your lineup? Oh, the suspense. Will my trophy be larger or smaller than Elias's? Um, <laughs> I, okay, let's put it this way. I, Moham, got only half a kill more than I expected him to. Uh, <laughs> and... Because you, you, so to be clear, you had a Moham would not get any kills pick square, yeah, right? And he, and and he, he got one. And he got he one. Just, you know, like, uh, he, he didn't play it was, Nick, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He yeah. played too much rel, got too high fee, probably got like a triple kill and like a scrim or something. He was like, I'm good to play rel today, guys. Okay. Um, and then Bopo inspired in quad. I had them as less than 12.5 kills. And they got exactly twice as many as 12.5. So they got 25 <laughs> kills. And that's the last time Whippo gets Olaf into Renekton. This world. It's just uh, mm. he either plays Renekton or he plays Olaf into Renekton. And here's he, your he actually popped off. complimentary yeah. thumbs down as well. You'll be able to sport this over the course of the rest of the episode. So You should uh, give me a larger thumbs down. Than <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yours. it is true. It is your true that yours got really, really rough. Uh yeah, they blew past that that line up out of mm-hmm. yours, that square. Okay, so uh, congratulations to Elias, the sole winner so far mm-hmm. of the World's Prediction Show uh, with his lineup, and we'll see if he can cont- continue it on with tomorrow's matches. But as we get into tomorrow's matches, let's talk first before we pick up any uh, squares or, or lineups. Let's talk about who is playing and what we think of them. So... G2 T1. Is it too early to call this El Clasico? I know these these teams have matched up. The biggest rivalry, greatest rivalry we've ever had between the East and the West, I believe. So uh, really exciting to see how this goes. Elias, what are you thinking of this G2 T1 match? Uh, I uh, I think G2 is going to do the West proud. Like, oh. for sure. I really do. I do not believe in t1 plot armor for this match um i do think in world so far t1 is ramping into a more comfortable position within the meta um but uh i've seen enough games specifically from g2's top side that i think they can lock in and prep and do something pretty incredible and that's like basically what i have predicated my plays going on uh, for for all of tomorrow. Um, obviously, I'm presenting the the two for today, uh, and then I have one uh, uh, six square play that uh, is very much predicated on like, no, I'm gonna, you know, call my shot. G two can do some stuff. 
Um, thankfully, I just need to like sort of index on the top side being bloody, which I am really indexing on. Um, uh, but uh, uh, for straight up prediction right now, I think it's a G2-2-1. Okay, 2-1 for G2. All right. Cubby, how about yourself? D1-2-1. Uh, I think that G2 has been playing good enough to take games, but T1 actually looks really good in this tournament, and I think the meta is good for them. And G2 has struggled in early games where T1 has been really, really, really strong. So I think that G2 breaks T1 once, but I've got T1 winning. All right. Finally, Croissant, what do you think? I was really struggling between either G2-2-1 or T1-2-1. Expected to be close. Um, so, sorry, we have G2 for Elias, and what is Cubby at? He has one to one. So yeah. we're, we're we we took both, you know. We're, yeah, we're split. Uh, You're the tiebreaker. You still haven't decided. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I like to, you know, wait till the last second. I I've really been going back and forth on this, especially because I haven't been studying fakers like CQ enough and that kind of. Just seeing what he's been playing, but I I'm gonna go G two T one as well or two one as well. Ooh, um, okay. Yeah, we have a lot of, of faith. You know, there was it was funny. One of the comments yesterday on the uh, prediction show that we uploaded, or maybe it was Hotline League. I forget. I think it was Hotline League. Was people somebody said like, "Where is all this faith for G two coming? They've been mediocre all year and have only succeeded because they've faced no competition in their region, and now." We're just, you know, we're now having all this faith in them at Worlds to do so well. Uh, I don't know if that's as genuine, given that they've had decent showings at other international events this year. But uh, it is it is interesting to see that folks are stepping up in faith of, of G2, at least from Elias and Croissant, and I think a lot of other people. So, yeah. Uh, do you guys have any guesses as to how that match might go? I mean, I know you said 2-1, but anybody want to throw out like a... I just think, you know... Faker's gonna carry it, or I think that Caps is gonna crush it in lane and then d dominate elsewhere. I mean, Elias was hinting at it yesterday with Owner. I don't know if you want to go into that because I fully agree with what I think you're gonna say here. You start. Oh, I start. Okay. Yeah. Uh, T1 has been getting carried by Owner. Owner's playing really well this Worlds, and he has been on carry champions. So I think a lot of this match will come down the jungle, and if G2 is going to play stuff with Caps and Yike where they can break Owner and Faker, which has worked for them in the past. And Owner is very likely to be on a carry. But like, I, I, we'll see if he switches it up. Again, I think that Oriana has to be denied from T1. They haven't gotten it in so far in the tournament. I don't think they will. That's one scenario where I could see Owner like maybe have it switch it up. But yeah, I, I think that it's going to be Owner pretty much on carries. And, and the reason I wanted you to start is because I wanted to say that from the drafts I've seen from G2, um, they aren't 100% locked in. But I think <laughs> so far, the way that they're drafting the top side is actually enabling Yike to sort of like um, propel his lanes forward in a way where he doesn't have to worry about keeping up too much pace with the jungler. Obviously, that's a part of the jungler's job. Um, but I do like how uh, with like the Nocturne game, um, they were essentially like, hey, Yike, we're going to help propel you with us rather than like, hey, can you like uh, play babysitter to uh, this lane swap stuff that they might not be particularly comfortable with? Um, so that was a big part of it uh, was, yes, owners carrying T1, but specifically from what I'm seeing from G2 drafts, I think they're going to set up Yike to um, not be like left to the wolves when it comes to like owner taking over the game. All right. Well, we'll see how things go. The other match that we have uh, tomorrow is a BLG PSG. I, I said, it's funny, I call, I refer to these as like tonight or whatever. Somebody in the chat earlier sure. was like, what are you talking about? These are today. Uh, I think anything that starts before the sun comes up in LA, I'm considering tonight. Uh, but BLG PSG projected to start at 8 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, is this just going to be a BLG stomp, boys? Do, should we even spend any time? Or is there anybody here who's a believer in PSG taking out BLG? Crickets. No. <laughs> it was it was close it's, last time I saw it. The OG yeah. was rough. You I, know? Every, I, that was the, the end of broadcast today. I and I loved that. Uh but it was big like 
I, I think Jet said it uh, best, which is just like, yeah, PSG did that, but I don't think any of us actually believe it, which is like <laughs> true. Like that's like the unfortunate yeah. truth. Like PSG has absolutely earned more respect than I'm giving them, and I will concede that. And and I will still not like uh, gleam a future where uh, they can put up a reasonable fight. Also, like I guess like PSG hasn't had. Now I want to review stats before I talk out of my butt, but I feel like they haven't had that great of a tournament so far. Yeah, they've kind of. I mean, they got through plans, yeah. but they were supposed to be the strongest team in plans, yeah. and they were not until they crushed Hundred Thieves. And mm -hmm. I think they've been decent in the main stage, but. Uh, it, it hasn't been... I, I thought a good PSG could unironically sneak into quarters with a decent draw, the way that yeah. we were talking about how a Western team would get in the quarters, but the form they've been in, it doesn't look like that. And BOG has not played great, but I don't know if it's enough to get broken by PSG. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, and their only win was versus Mad Lions, and that's Mad Lions, so I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, so does anybody want to say that they'll get a win? No, uh, no. <laughs> Sorry, I, I mean we were we were wrong about it. HLA fly, right? I think the yeah, we the thing that makes me I would be a lot more, despite Weibo's competitive game against Gen G, like first game of the Swiss, uh, like I would have it. I would have PSG maybe taking a game off of Weibo. Um, because one thing that I was really impressed by for a lot of the play teams uh, and that has come through in like games between um, it, it's like the top laners from some of these lower tier teams have impressed me especially in mm -hmm. Oz and I don't know if I'm, if I'm saying it right <laughs> or Kiaya oh, yeah um, Aji yeah Aji, Az, yeah. uh, it's they. I think could destabilize a lot of what like Breathe's role would be on Weibo Gaming and like figuring out like what what do we even put this guy on. But I think when it comes to Bin, Bin, uh, I I don't remember Cubby. Do you remember like how they actually got pushed to five games at MSI and if it was like centered around top or whether it was centered around like a different role. I think Bin was the hero of that series. I just I think BLG just did not play good and PSG were finding drafts that won, but I, I roughly remember that series. Yeah. Uh, it was probably like on like dropping the ball, right? Or like going like when they were really struggling and I think they've grown through a lot of those struggles, which is why I'm like, okay, well I don't actually expect Betty and Woody to really put pressure on Elk and on in the current bot meta and then when it comes to the top side, I just think that Knight matches well into Maple, and Ben will will carry. Well, uh, whereas Az or Aji could um, make a bigger splash against like Breathe, for example. Mm. Uh, so yeah, just have it as a two zero. All right. Well, we'll see how things go. It is time though for us to get into our lineups. So for those that are watching, if you haven't heard yet, we're sponsored by Price Picks. Uh, Price Picks is a really fun way to interact with worlds and just esports and sports in general. Uh, all you got to do is you got to sign up using the link in the description. Uh, you can also do exclamation mark Price Picks if you're watching live. Use that link. When you do, uh, use code Travis whenever it asks you for a code. That's how we get credit, and it's very helpful if you do that. Uh, but basically, that will allow you to, to make it so that whenever you play your first lineup of $5 or more, win or lose, they'll give you $50 in promo credit to keep playing. So uh, feel free to play prize picks if it is something that you feel like you can do so responsibly and if you're in the place to do so. Uh, but it is a really fun way to play. We talked a lot about all that in the last episode. So if you want more details on how the platform works and how that works and how we like it and why we like it and all that types of things, just check last um last game or yet last day's episode i'm all over the place jet lag is killing me still uh and this weird world schedule either way uh let's get into the lineups so croissant i think you went last last time you said you like to wait till last minute so i'm gonna make you go first this time what is your lineup and i now have hopefully this works oh it did not work wow that was supposed to 
That was supposed to. Oh wait, no, 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 hang on. Ta-da! There we go. Okay, so now. Ta-da! Oh wait, now you guys are all echoing. I'm gonna fix that right now. Okay, so I'll I'll fix it first with croissant so that he can keep talking while I fix everybody else's. But croissant, what is your lineup? So I'm doing salty run back on combo for top side of the team that I expect to get 2-0'd, which is no longer FlyQuest, but is PSG. And they'll definitely <laughs> get 2-0'd this time. Uh, and so I have their top mid and jungle as less than 13.5 on first two kills, uh, first two maps for kills. Okay, so that's Aji, Junjia, hopefully I'm saying it right, and Maple, yep. less than 13.5 kills in the first two games, which is a combo. Mm-hmm. So we'll add that into the screen so that people can see what this looks like. Hopefully... Uh, it looks all right for everybody. We did get some feedback yesterday that people wanted to get see, see some like visual indications of what the lineups are. So, uh, so that's your first pick. What is your second square? And my second square, which I believe is not advised per Elias's wisdom, but also a combo and Faker and Guma as less than fifteen point five. Ooh, okay, I like that one though. I so you, think, uh, you know, if they do come out, uh, I think if they win, as we talked about, owner will um, be on a carry jungle and hard impact uh, top and bot lane more so than actually around mid. And then, um, yeah, I think Faker and Goom have actually gotten, like, they've been on the higher side for kills when on, like, Callista and Yon. Um but I don't expect them to be able to get Faker on like the Yones and the Ori's, and he'll be on like uh, Silas, um, Nico, Ari, etc. And so I think he will be more of a role player in this series. And so I'm p- placing my face, faith in Caps to outperform Faker, and placing my faith in Mr. Hansama to neutralize the bot lane. All right. So again, just for anybody checking, that is the PSG top jungle mid at less than 13 and a half kills in the first two games and Faker and Gumiushi at less than 15 and a half kills in the first two games. So uh, croissant going super negative on this one, uh, but that's fine. All right. That's me. Next up, we're going to clear off the board and we're going to ask Elias what his lineup is notably the only winner from yesterday but also barely a winner based off of how it went so we'll see if he can if people win more. listen to me they get to play more yeah so that's that's i'll take that as a w sure because uh, i'd feel guilt otherwise um the first one is a, a g2 individual um for kills and uh that'll be broken blade um the the line at five uh and i play more I just, I, it's everything I was sort of explaining that I think the top side can do some stuff. Um, and five kills across two games is so little. Uh, when I think that um, there's this fear that like a lot of Western teams will like roll over when they're, they're getting really, really scared. And I have uh, no reason to believe G2 will play that way. Even if they're getting um, out macroed and owners all over the place. I think they will look for fights, and I think Broken Blade is one of those people who can pick up fights um, or pick up kills along the way. Uh, and the last one, uh, while it is going to be less, it's, a, it's I assure you, because I think they're very good, uh, it's Wei. Uh, the line was 5.5, and I took the less. I think Wei is really, really good at making sure his laners are getting the kills. Uh, when you're getting fights, and then he plays his role as a tank super well, um, that uh, I would guess the reason that Price Picks set this square up in this way is because they think it's going to be such an advantage that, you know, like, everybody's going to be picking up kills. But I just yeah. don't think when BLG uh, beat PSG, it's going to look like that. I don't think it's going to be particularly bloody and gruesome like some of the FlyQuest Hunnel Life games. Uh, I think it's going to be, like, pretty calculated in and out, so... That's where I'm at. All right. So Broken Blade. Those are great. More than five kills in the first two games and way less than five and a half kills in the first two games. Yeah. I'm going to be I, submitting those right now. You should. <laughs> uh, and I had mentioned it to 
uh, Cubby, oh, you were you were all in the call. That like for me, these were the only two I kind of walked away with today. Um, everything else is like pretty scary. Even uh, the Caps line, uh, even though I think he can be like really explosive, um, there's just something about seven kills that I'm like two games where they're able to break through four. Like I found that to be really difficult. But those two, I'm I'm really comfortable with. Yeah, just really. Sorry, really quick. I really wonder how much those projections are set on like the playoffs of the respective regions. Because yeah. I'm like looking through, I'm like Broken Blade. Yeah, the only time he gets under like five kills across two matches is like mm -hmm. on Cassante, which he hasn't played this Worlds, right? But maybe he could against Zeus. And then for Jungle, it's like way like, yeah, he played Vi Vi Skarner, but like if he plays Zyra, Lilia, Brand, which he did a lot of pre Worlds, then yeah. it could, right? But so it's really interesting. All right, finally, we have Cubby. Cubby, can he redeem himself after yesterday? He took a very ambitious uh, three-pick lineup with a flex pick, uh, which did not go well for him. So let's see if he can do it today. Cubby, what's your what's your lineup? It it was a bit of a bummer. I was two kills off, uh, one <laughs> on each side. But we're going to redeem ourselves today. Um, all right, first one. Pretty similar logic, actually, to Elias. It's just that instead of Wei, I have Junjia under four kills. Yeah. Um, he has been just raw support jungle duty. He's Sejuani Maokai Vai. There are two Wukong games that are in the play-ins that he has, but he has just been purely a supportive jungler. They're a team that's disadvantaged against BLG, and I don't see him getting four kills over two maps. Um, that said... The other one that I feel decent about is Knight over 11 kills in the first two maps. Knight has been one of the bloodiest players yeah. in all of Worlds. And BLG is a team that when they do get ahead, they will style. So I have faith that... I I, like, I don't think that Wei is going to pick up a lot of kills, but I can see BLG, like if they get up 10-0 on a map, just kind of you know stomping PSG. I do have faith that this will be a stomp. Uh... I, like the other thing where uh, Elias was talking about with the caps line, because I was tempted to take caps at seven for more, is will a team play three lanes or not? Because mm. for me, when looking at some of the maps, like something to consider if you look at it, if you think a team is going to play three lanes, they're going to have a lower kill game because they're actually going to be drawing opponents to them and then trying to outplay the 1v1s, 1v2s, or 1v3s rather than playing two lanes in a 4-1 setup where it's going to be a lot of grouping and fighting afterwards. So I was really tempted to take the cap square of seven. I chose not to because G2 has shown they can play three lanes and play narrower setups, like with four ones and the Ori, Galio, Nocturne comp they played. Um, I don't think that PSG will play three lanes unless the Yone is up. And I also do not like Maple's answers in the Yone. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that BLG will play Buddy because they've been playing a lot of comps where it's like Knight on Oriana, Knight on Syndra. So I do think that Knight will be a huge focus in those games. All right. So your lock-in is Junjia at less than four kills and Knight at more than 11. So we'll see yeah. how that goes. All right. Here's what we're going to do because we had this idea yesterday and we thought it was really fun and people seemed to like it. Um, we're going to have chat help us submit a lineup uh, because I, I'm going to submit this thing. Uh, we'll just do whatever you guys want us to do. But uh, I would like Cubby right now for you to help me pick a number between one and thirty-five. Eh? That's a lot of pressure. Um, we're gonna go with eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Croissant number between one and thirty-five. Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. <laughs> Strategic. So. I don't actually know if we'll be able to, to submit this, but let's find out. So I'm going to go in, and we have a grid here. So we're going to go find Count. on the kills. One, two, three. Okay, so 9, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18. So Maple is one of our squares. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is Betty. <laughs> this is going to be the most cursed prediction ever. All right. I, I hate these squares. Yeah, <laughs> so, they're awful. I, I'm so excited for chat. So, so chat, we're going to do a poll. The first one, Twitch chat, we're going to ask you, will Maple, I'm just going to, this is going to be cursed. Will Maple get more or less 
than what is the question? Five, five and a half, five and a half in the first two games. So we'll put this up for one minute. Uh, you can use channel points in it to skew it. Uh, and you, you guys all know this is my promo credit that they've sent me. So if you mess this up, but the poll is up on, on Twitch chat right now. So let me know where everybody thinks it's, it's pretty even right now. So we'll see while, while this is going on, Cubby, what do you think is going to happen here? More or less for maple. Yeah. This is like the worst line. Yeah. It, the, it's the worst so, square. It's so terrible. Just, <laughs> yeah, it's the worst square. I, I have no feelings on either side. I will say, for whatever reason, I will say more. Okay. All right. Well, the results are in. It's overwhelmingly more. Probably somebody slammed a bunch of a <laughs> bunch of uh, channel points in to, oh my God. to curse me on they this. Should. So, Maple at more. Okay. The next lineup is, yes, kills, uh, to answer your question, Anders. Uh, we have to wait for this poll to go away and there we go. It's complete. Uh, cart Meister contributed 4,600 channel points <laughs> to yeah. that. Okay. So the next poll is, uh, Betty, uh, five kills more or less. All right. While the poll is up, let me know croissant. What do you think is going to happen, Betty? More or less than five? Wait, so we have to bet on this as well, or we have no, to? No, we do not. No, no, this is for chat. We're just giving our thoughts while we. Yeah, we're just giving our. Th I need to kill one minute while they vote. Betty, more or less? Um, let me see his previous games. Not going to yeah. go off of my memory here. There's I'll, sometimes uh, a little stat breakdown on the square, but I don't see that for for this one. I think they have less whenever it's at Worlds because they just have less data. I'll jump yeah. in and believe... I believe this square is skewed because I think it was a Kaisa game that Betty went crazy, but it was against Mad Lions. Yeah. And that, I think, taking the, the more on this is mondo bait. Okay, um, but I also know chat is hilarious. Well, the funny thing is, oh. I don't even know if we can submit. Oh no, I guess we can submit it. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're at more on five and a half kills on Maple, and more at five kills oh. on Betty. Been like so, PSG a lot. Yeah, I don't know whose know, idea it was to have chat come up with these, but they have cursed me now. So like PSG is gonna pull a fly quest. They're gonna win a game, and chat's gonna win. Yeah, yeah probably. All probably. right. Well, just so everybody knows, I am submitting this now. Uh, so if anybody wants to get in on this cursed adventure with me, then we're in. <laughs> it's also funny because it has a lower payout because they're both on the same team. Right. Oh yep. no. It's still, okay. Won't let me submit it because they are on the, the same team. So we need to pick another number. So Can we get we'll, rid of the Betty square. <laughs> no, I, we have to keep Which it. I think. Worse? Um, so we have to choose. Okay. So who, uh, Elias, give me a number between one and 35. That's not 18 or 19 or within close proximity to those, I guess. Damn. He's rigging it. He's rigging uh, it. Guys. No, I won't. I won't. Uh, real true. Random seven, seven. Okay. I really uh, didn't want to look at the squares and be like, I'm a threat. Yes. I think this is player. Okay. I think it's, owner. I think it's big. Oh, it's, oh, it's owner. Okay. Yes. Okay. That one's fun for chat. Yeah, so chat, where are we? Let's bring you guys back. I have to find I believe out. I have a lineup where I have owner it more. Okay. So uh chat, we're gonna ask you all owner at let's see, the square is set at five point five. More or less. The poll is up. Who have I not called on yet? Uh Elias, right? Elias yeah. is owner going to get more or less than five point five? This one's more the 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 main reason I didn't go it is uh, I like having a cute little trophy in my uh, in my little webcam and I do see a world where it's like ah oh, it's just one one kill short uh, but uh, owners caring like I, I this is very doable okay so it looks like oh it's it's swapping as. As time goes on, somebody's <laughs> slamming a bunch of less. It's going to be really close. Are people going to make me make the most cursed lineup the, the ever? The points are real currency here. 
Yeah. That's so funny. And channel points could just make me lose promo credit I mean, on price picks. Say. No. Somebody save me. Pick more. Somebody's so somebody's funny. sneaking it over the line. Oh, when this no. Hits, chat's going to be a genius. Okay, chat's... Smoke, smoke Dog contributed. Wait, so it's owner less, less. Yeah. less and Maple more. Uh, Maple, and we're doing Maple more, Betty more, and owner less. That's so funny. Let's oh, see if no. it lets me submit it. Do I do this? I think I could do this as a do, flex do, play. Do the flex play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 please. Yeah, okay. <laughs> see if it lets That's me submit so it. so funny. Okay, lineup successfully submitted as a flex play. So we only need two of these to, to land in order to make it go through. But yeah, somebody definitely cursed me. All right, everybody, that is the show. We did go a little over time because we did the fun uh, the fun thing with the chat, but hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, again, if you'd like to sign up and play Price Picks, you can do so with the link in the description if you're watching on YouTube or in chat if you are watching there. When you do, please use code Travis. And thanks to Price Picks for sponsoring us. We'll be back tomorrow to see how everyone did, including chat, and to find out if G2 actually did sneak in the win against T1. So see you then.